Quantum computing has the opportunity to change just about everything we do in the world today. We have to make sure that everybody who has the ability to contribute to this enterprise gives an opportunity to do so. Today, there's already lots of things we can do in the quantum realm with quantum technologies, and that's one of the things we're really trying to concentrate on here at QSEC. One of the things that sets us apart here is that we've actually been teaching and doing quantum information for decades. So we've got a long history that not everybody has. But what really makes it exciting is that over the last five years, we've launched the Quantum Science and Engineering Center to start looking at practical problems and thinking about the things you can do with quantum technologies today. Quantum computing has been making waves in diverse fields like chemistry and material science, medicine and communication. And historically, the emphasis in quantum computing platforms has been in making them more efficient and making them more powerful. But I think equally important will be to consider the security as these systems scale up and make sure that that security is within the fabric of the device rather than being considered as an afterthought. The quantum algorithm designs at QSEC is really distinct because you know, we are focused on the real world applications and also we are consider the uh, security perspectives. We have been designed quantum machine learning algorithms, which actually consider the noises and errors on the current devices into the algorithm design process. We have pioneered the idea of utilizing uh, entangled quantum beams, such as uh, neutron beams, to uncover um, entanglement in real materials. Quantum sensing with entangled probes, such as neutrons and photons, are expected to deliver real-time application very soon. In order to access all spectrums of these entangled quantum light sources, as our new quantum resources are at our disposal, my lab focuses on experiment of generating and control and potential application of such entangled photons. So my lab develops biphotonic platforms that integrate entangled light sources. And with that, we are able to better probe in complex biosystems at larger scales. And that allows us to understand better the biological phenomena that allows us to move towards quantum-enabled precision medicine and quantum-enabled drug discoveries. I'm a physicist. So my research interest in developing the quantum entangled pro like light sources and some of the image application. I'm interested in how this kind of new technology could be actually used in different settings beyond physical sciences, such as into biomedical sciences. So I've been looking for potential collaborations into different disciplines like medicine, biology. In my lab, we collaborate with the physics department in order to transform fiber optics into a universal quantum interconnect. We incorporate ion traps and photonically active devices into fiber optics. We get a device that is not just capable of cross-connecting the nodes of quantum network, but is also capable of transforming the data on the fly in the way that is universally applicable across the nodes of that network, regardless of the material platform in which those nodes are realized. Never imagined that I'll be involved in chemistry. I like this uh, collaboration because from a computer science perspective, we are learning a lot about how nature computes. Uh, and it kind of is changing the discipline. And also, I think we are bringing new ideas on how to take care of resources and complexity and manage, you know, large-scale computation. So it's beautiful that both disciplines are learning and growing quite a bit. I never thought that I will be interacting with the theoretical computer scientists at such a fundamental level, wherein we actually talk about how compilers are designed, how complexity is defined, and learning all this from from an expert in the field of theoretical computer science, and then finding an analogy to that in chemical systems. There is so much to be learned about uh, the nature and the exploitation of entanglement that it would require many different perspectives to uh, not only uh, discover the underlying science, but also to uh, imagine the revolutionary new technologies that will serve society. This atmosphere 
generates excitement and attracts uh, highly qualified graduate students that want to participate and make contributions in frontier science and make an impact in society, uh, in particular by interaction with the industry. We have people from multiple fields collaborating on inventing new quantum technologies. So when a grad student comes to work with us in, in my lab, they will be exposed to multiple fields in projects that cross-cut in those fields. And this thing is quite unique. We have to start reaching out to the communities beyond the physicists, chemists, computer scientists, and mathematicians that got the field started to bring in the sort of people who can actually provide the technology that allows us to control things and actually make them robust, marketable devices. QSIC really harbors students that are motivated to leave a positive impact on the world. The center really is uh, devoted towards supporting the successful careers of young researchers. We're preparing the future for the next generation of our quantum workforce, and uh, with that comes a lot of fascinating and interesting research. I think the heart of what we're trying to do here at QSEC is to understand where we can have an impact by bringing people together from different disciplines to work on a single problem. That cross-disciplinary action is what's really important.